Yeah, hi Oliver. Cool to see you here. Welcome. How is life treating you? I hope fine. Are you still tongue blocking? Or do you switch to lip pursing? Always interesting questions to talk about. Uh, right now I was playing pretty much tongue blocking here. I was playing a traditional Swedish song and then you often do this kind of, um, yeah. Stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying out a live stream here. I mean, I did it like a year ago and it feels like a long, long time ago. Um, and uh, yeah, then why not do a live stream again? It's fun and it's interesting to to learn about all of these modern stuff uh, that is all around us, the digital life. Cool, tongue blocking 90% of the time. Yeah, I wish I was tongue blocking all the time because there is something in the tone that is so nice. Uh, it's kind of fatter and deeper in a way. Uh, so yeah, but different. Yeah, Joe Phillips. Hi, <laughs> exactly. I'm uh, I'm live right now. I'm just sitting here and having my setup. Uh, and uh, if you have any harmonica question, just ask. I'm trying out the, trying out the YouTube live this this evening, and it's pretty funny, <laughs> actually. It's uh, it's a way to connect with people and to try different things. And maybe I should play something, or do you want me to talk about anything? I mean, if you have any interesting question, just ask me. Uh, and I think you all can hear and see me. That's at least something good. <laughs> no one has written anything about that. Uh, but maybe I will play something for you. Mm. <laughs> And I don't remember, Oliver, do you do this corner switch as well, where you do... That's what I'm working on <clears throat> at the moment on the chromatic. It's very cool. Uh, Joe Phillips, yeah, throat vibrato. Yes, I have some tips. Uh, one tip is to... Uh, find a harmonica that you are comfortable playing, that you feel resonates with you and with your or oral cavity. Uh, so don't start on a harmonica that is hard to play for you. I mean, if, if a C harp is great, then start with a C harp. And uh, when doing throat vibrato, you kind of cough inwards. Sounds strange, but you're using this muscle down here, the glottis muscle. <coughs> Sounds like that. So you're almost uh, saying like ha 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 or hoo 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 hoo, but taking away the vocal cords. So it's just the <coughs> that kind of sound that's going on. Uh, and then you inhale, start on inhale. And it's hopefully it will sound like this. It feels very strange in the beginning, it's like like you're choking, but uh, just work on it and it will come. And uh, you can also do it in so many different speeds, the throat vibrato, either or like. And you can hear when I do it really slow, you can almost hear every kind of snap with the... Uh, with the um, yeah with this muscle working and you can try I mean to do it like like doing eight notes and then you could do triplets
And then you can do 16 notes. Sixteen triplets. Then you're working with this, um, and it works best in the lowest register, and it works on blow as well. But it's harder. And now I was on a C harp, if I do it on a low F. That's lower back. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of uh, how do you surround this? That's how I do folk vibrato, at least, and it works on chromatic as well, uh, like this. So throat vibrato is very useful and fun. Uh, yeah, hello Perry Lopez, Olivier. Yeah, yes, I use the switching, but I feel like using it when I'm going up. Ah, like from B flat to D, but not from D to B. Interesting. Yeah, I think um, I use it both on up and down like it's very nice when jumping in big octaves or like that um, I tried to use it in both ways but interesting and actually I had kind of a beef with improvising using corner switch because I was, when I started learning corner switch, I was playing mostly classical and arpeggios and stuff. And it felt so hard to improvise using corner switch after that. <laughs> and I was so used to using the lip piercing when I was improvising. But then, um, yeah, then uh, then I just work on it. And now I kind of try to, 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 to use both techniques every day to get them into my play. Uh... Friedrich, right now I'm learning how to bend on a C harmonica, but I don't manage to do... Yeah, Friedrich, that's pretty common actually in the beginning, because the reeds are a lot heavier and bigger, so you require a lot more air, air to breathe in, and also the position of your tongue and the oral cavity really has to... It, it feels in different ways, uh, but because now I'm doing it on a C harp, and now on a low F. And I can feel it's two different positions in my mouth around finding the bend. So just spend time doing it is my best tip. Uh, don't rush it, take it slow. Don't inhale too hard. Because bending is not about volume. It's about uh, control, position and air pressure. So. If you just work on it, it will come to you, I'm sure. No need to worry. Uh, and uh, yeah, it took me a while as well. And I mean, now playing like low C harps, it's really tricky to, to bend notes. <laughs> it's so big. Uh, Pero Lope, I want to play mostly jazz, uh, but want to say make it deep. What is the best chromatic harmonica for that? Yeah, good question. Uh, how do you mean deep? You mean like a like a soft, nice tone? Uh, I recommend the Suzuki harmonicas a lot. I love them. I have played them for over over ten years now, 
And uh, if you want a starter model, I would check the Suzuki SEX48. That's a great harmonica for the money. It's it's the same mechanics as the G48 in series line, but other reed plates. And uh, I have one SEX that plays better <laughs> than my more expensive harmonica. So check out the Suzuki SEX. They are wonderful. Uh, and John Leuner, any recommendation for bending on a high harmonic on an F? Yeah, there you have to kind of move all of these things, the tongue and the resonance forward. So you like happening in the front here. If I do some strange sounds for you, if you do it low, start bending on a G harmonica. But bending on an F, you're like working in the front of your mouth a lot. Uh, like um yeah just experiment and it will come it's like when you find it you will not lose it so uh, move everything forward in the mouth is my best tip to bend on a high harmonica olivier uh question about bass harmonica how would you compare the sound and attack of the chromatic bass s48 to the bass harmonica? yeah uh it's different because the big normal bass harmonica you just play by blowing air and this one is both on, in an exhale and uh, on the normal bass harmonica you can use a lot more attack like you can almost spit in the harmonica to get the note going it's super cool uh, and uh, yeah but at the same time it's so tricky to play because it's two instruments and only blow notes but on the on the other one it's kind of, you have to be very, very precise in the timing and the air pressure and your embouchure to make the, the note sing. Maybe I should do a live stream on bass harmonicas. That, oh, <laughs> that's a TV show I would watch. Um, but yes, they are different. On a normal bass, you can play a bit harder. And on the Suzuki chromatic bass, you can play, you have to play very soft and very controlled. And it, also that one has valves, so some notes just doesn't work to go switch back and forth very fast uh, because the valves will mash up, unfortunately. Uh, Marcos Marcos, hello Philip, trying to learn blow bends, tongue blocking. Could you please show us your technique? <laughs> yeah, I will. I don't know if I can tongue block blow bend. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it. On my low F, some reverb. Hole eight. Yeah, I could. But I'm not that good time blocking blow bending. It's like happening in the front here if you blow bend tongue blocking uh, and you can hear on mine it's not so smooth <laughs> I need to practice that I, I mostly blow bend and then I play lip pursing actually I'm mostly a lip pursed player whoops reverb is still here uh, Jeppe Anderson thumbs up for the bass yes the bass uh, live stream will come Arca, yeah, what's my favorite personal jazz harmonic album? I think it's Toots Tielemans, uh, and there is a record called Toots Möt och Tob, which is a record recorded in Sweden, where he plays with a choir, uh, an eight-piece choir and um, a jazz trio. It's so fantastic, Toots Möt och Tob. Um, and then I also uh, really love... Uh, uh, the record Toots Tielemans did with, uh, with Bill Evans, Affinity. <sighs> That's a great one. And then Howard Levy. Wow, he has done so many good records. I think I have almost all of them. Um, and one of my favorites is where he plays, with, he plays Jewish music with Trio Globo. It's amazing. I don't know the name, but yeah, I can. There are so many records. I don't get all the names in my head now. Gregoire Maré has made some amazing records. Uh, and Antonio Serrano. Wow, there are so many amazing harmonica players. 
Yeah, Octavio, greetings from Mexico. Hello, greetings from Stockholm, Sweden. Dove asks, are you self-taught? Uh, no, I'm not. I mean, yes, I am. <laughs> My father taught me how to play harmonica first, the basic blues stuff. And then I never had a harmonica teacher until I met Toots Tielemans. And then I met him a few times, four or five times. But I mean, it was not lessons. We had coffee, ice cream and played harmonica and talked. And then I have taken private lessons with uh, Howard Levy, with Mark Breitfelder, great German player, with Carlos Del Junco, uh, with Robert Bonfiglio, the classical virtuoso. Uh, so I have taken many private lessons later on. But in the beginning, my father taught me how to bend notes and how to play Sonny Boy Williamson stuff. Uh, but I also always played other instruments. So I have transferred music from those instruments to the harmonica. Um, Pedro Lopez, what's the hardest thing I have played? Uh, that's the thing I have not played yet. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, I played a classical concerto, Spivakovsky. Uh, it was so hard and so funny, and it's written for the harmonica. That was a big challenge and very hard, and it was with symphony orchestra. I had to practice a lot. And uh, right now I'm working on Donna Lee, actually, to play that one smooth and nice. It takes time to get that into my, into my mouth. Uh, Friedrich, I want to learn how to play jazz harmonica. What must I be able to do if I want to be a part? Ah, good question about on your, my Patreon page. Yes, on my Patreon page, was, which is like a harmonica school that I run, which is my passion project, there you can sign up and it's a membership site and there is no like annual plan, no three or six months, it's just per month how long you want to be there. You just go in and then you can go out. And the level there is intermediate and advanced, uh, so it's good if you're able to play single notes, you know how to play some tunes, uh, you have maybe jammed with people, etc. Uh, but you don't have to be a virtuoso. I hope I can help you. And I have some starter jazz lessons there, absolutely. Uh, but uh, I also have advanced stuff, <laughs> so it's hard to say. Uh, uh, because I don't want to trick you. But if you never have played jazz, I mean, I think you will learn things if you just check in there. And if you don't like it, uh, I will just, uh, you can tell me and I will give you a refund, so you can log out. Uh, Arka, yeah, thanks for, thank you. Uh, Octavio Serrano, some thoughts on how to practice improvisation on different songs. Yes, uh, learn the melody, that's the first one, then you learn the chords. I made a video on this on YouTube that you can see different ways to learn a jazz tune. So you learn the chords of a song uh, and then you really got to learn all the chord tones. I mean, if I play like this. There I'm playing the chords of Autumn Leaves. And if I'm doing like this. There I'm playing the beginning of Giant Steps. I missed up a little bit, but yeah. But anyway, learn how to play the chord tones is a great way to start to improvise on songs. Because the chord tones are like the grammar of what's going on in the chord progression. And uh, then I would say learn how to connect notes between the chord tones. So if you play on all the leaves. <laughs> like that, then you add some chromatic approach notes here and there, and it can sound like... playing chromatically to all the chord tones. So I'm not focusing on scales here, I'm focusing on 
what notes are in the chords and then the quickest ways to get to them or not the quickest some different jazzy ways to get to the chords of the song uh, but then you can also choose a scale focus so if i do the same thing i was trying to be able to play all the scales but to play like dorian mixolydian major alterat etc but then you have to play more notes uh, because you gotta hear the scale <laughs> otherwise it's it's kind of yeah so i always recommend start learning the chord tones really on a deep level and then approach notes to the chord tones and all of this i have lessons on this on my patreon page uh cool klaus banong colleague yeah thanks for being here yep but do you ever find yourself lost in all these techniques Yes, a little bit, but I also always think that they help me somehow. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, but also really decide like, okay, for this hour, I will just play lip piercing on these exercises that I will do today. And then you can think, but tomorrow I will start my practice session with 20 minutes of tongue block exercise. I will only do... Just doing tongue blocking improvisation, for etc. I often do that. I put like a timer for five minutes, and then I do tongue blocking corner switch improvisations like this. I was just improvising something but my goal for that improvisation was to use tongue blocking corner switch all the time so there I kind of used technique in a practice session uh, hula cool yeah yeah check Max the lowest book uh, that's a great one I bought this book uh, and checked it it was a great I really, uh, he's a great teacher. He has taught many students and he is so kind of natural in music. So yeah, his book is great. But he doesn't have tab on his uh, sheet music. I use tab in all of my examples because I think that it could be good to be able to read tab. It's better to read music, of course. But using tabs is also great to be able to do. Uh, all right, let's see. Tom Niesto, oh, sorry, I'm pronouncing your name wrong. What is your opinion on diminished tuning for chromatic? Why is it not common, commonly used tuning? Yeah, good question. I have never tried diminished tuning on chromatic, but I have tried it on diatonic quite a bit. I did that many years ago, and I also tried augmented tuning. And both of them are cool, but I felt like I had put so much work in the standard tuning so i didn't have energy to to learn another tuning actually i already play two tunings because i used the uh, i mean the chromatic and the diatonic are not exactly tuned in the same way so i use two different tunings uh, but i play chromatic button accordion that is tuned in diminished tuning so i know the system it's free system for all the keys and or is it no it's four uh, I take back what I said. It's but to sum it up, it's not that many uh, systems of I mean kind of layouts of how to play in different keys. But I think it's great if you put the hours into it. It I'm sure you will be able to make great uh, music on it. Uh, and I think um, it's a bit sad that not many more people have played it because I mean it's just notes and music, and you shouldn't be so afraid of trying different stuff and. 
I mean, if it if it gives you joy and gives you hunger to play harmonica, then you should use diminished tuning or augmented tuning or whatever tuning you like. It shouldn't be kind of, uh, yeah, you don't have to play the normal one, I think. Um, but if you want to play all of Toots Tillman's licks and so, that will be a lot easier on the standard tuning, of course. Um, and as I said, I have put so many years on the standard tuning, so I will not... I would not uh, switch tuning, I think. But I would like to have a diminished tune chromatic. I don't have one. Yeah, good questions. I just also want to ask you, is this an interesting way of, of... Is a live stream a good thing? Please write. Do you dig it? I dig it. It's kind of cozy. Uh, and it's nice to have all of you with me here. And you have asked great questions. Uh, so if you have a question, just ask. Uh, Jeppe Anderson, yeah, do you have different tuned harmonicas? Like in 440, 443, 443, I hear that depending on the season, playing in a shirt can sound... Oh yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, my harmonicas are tuned in 442. And then I have one chromatic that I have tuned to 440, and one is in 444. But I rarely use the other ones. Um, I have, uh, I have, uh, I have, I used a high tuned one when I played with a uh, or uh, wind orchestra because they played very high tunings, and uh, then the 440 one I I never used actually. Uh, but and I think it's a matter of how hard you play and how much pressure you put on the reeds um, And of course, it's different for every person I think one should think more about that and not just stay with the stock tuning You should experiment and find your own breath pressure because then you will sound better But I noticed that I sound best on 442 uh, Because 443 I, it's a bit high for me and 440 I play I add a bit of pressure so I go down in pitch. Uh, and about seasonal tuning, I don't know if it changes actually. I have I have not thought of that. I always warm my harmonicas in a heating pad before I play. So they uh, have a nice warm feeling to them. So the reed plates are very warm. Then they never mess up the tuning. They always work very good. Uh, X-ray man, I don't hear you leaking in wrong holes. As here, I, uh, do you have how to not leak between holes? Yeah, I mean, you mean like I would say it's just about practice and uh, putting the hours in it and think about it a lot. Uh, practice to play. F if you notice that you play a thing and that you have notes leaking, like if you play. There you always leak. Then okay, then you practice that. You feel how that note feels in your mouth and you always try to increase your awareness so you don't open too much. Uh, and then also practice in the dark. It's a great thing to do actually, to close your eyes and then just uh, play because it will kind of Because playing in the dark with the eyes closed, you really have to work with your sensations of where you are on the instrument. And sometimes I also practice in a dark room, actually, to play like minor seven arpeggios. In a completely dark room, because then I have to grab the instrument, know where I am. Okay, my wrist is here, my hand is here, here's the button. Hold one, that hold feels like that. It's super cool to get that very kind of intimate contact with your instrument. Practicing in the dark has helped me a lot. Oliver, do you play with an amp sometimes or pedals? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I have, um, I have mostly have reverb 
reverb pedals. I have one Strymon Big Sky that is amazing. Uh, and I also have some loop pedals uh, and I have an octave pedal. But I use all of that mostly for um, practicing actually. Uh, I don't use it live yet. Uh, but I use loops pretty much when I practice to practice riffs and licks, intonation and strange stuff. Uh, and also octave pedals to get like a synthesizer sound is, is pretty funny. So, but not live, but in my private practice room. But maybe I should do a video on, on my pedals as well. But you have a great sound. I heard a clip where you played Oliver on Instagram or Facebook. It was, pff, man, your tone is amazing. I really dig it. You are one of my favorite chromatic harmonica players here. Man, your tone is top class. Everyone, check out Olivier. Friedrich asked, when will your new CD with my jazz quartet? Yeah, good question. We talked about it today on the mixing with the band and hopefully we will have a digital release in August and then we will print the CD in October and vinyl this time. So it's coming on the big LP as well. And it's classical music arranged for our jazz quartet. And you can see some of the... We have put out videos here on YouTube. We play Handel. Uh, Lazia Ciopianca and we played The Swan by Olivia Missian. You can check in my videos here on YouTube. We have some nice high quality videos. Dimitris. Hi man, uh, great job. Actually today I was looking to buy a chromatic harmonica for jazz. Any recommendation? Yes, uh, I would recommend the Suzuki SEX48 chromatic harmonica in C. It's a great harmonica for the money. I have not tried anything better in that price range. And if you're just starting out, it's good to buy a harmonica for like 200 to 300 euros maybe. Don't buy a harmonica for a chromatic harmonica for 100 euro because the ones I have tried have not been so good. And if it's not a good instrument, it's not fun and then you don't play. And also, I mean, you can buy very expensive <laughs> chromatic harmonicas, but maybe wait with that. I recommend uh, Suzuki SEX48. You can check on my channel here. I have lots of videos playing on that chromatic harmonic. Tom, for, for timing, do you practice with drum loops? Yes, I do. I have a great app on my phone, Drum Genius, a green face with sunglasses. Super fun. Uh, that has jazz backing, jazz drum loops that I often play with. And then I also just sometimes sit on YouTube and find like groovy backing track drums <laughs> at 60 ppm and then I or 80 ppm and then I play to that as a warm up. Uh, and, uh, and I also practice a lot with a metronome every day for an hour or so to work with my inner time. Um, because a drum loop is good, but it gives you lots of rhythmical information, which can be nice. But it also helps you a lot, which can be very good and can help you too much. So there it's also good to just play to a metronome, the deadest, bore, most boring click in the world. <laughs> but if you can make a metronome swing, then you have a great swing, because the metronome doesn't swing at all. So that's my philosophy. Uh, but yes, I like drum loops and metronomes. Yeah, great job. What technique would you recommend for developing legato, especially when breath direction? That's a good question. <laughs> That's like one hour of live stream. Uh, I don't know if there is a specific technique because it works on both blow and draw, but I would advise you to practice like this. If you're playing a line mm, like this, I'm playing A, B, C sharp, D. Then I would practice like this. Then I would practice like this.
because then you really learn how to feel the distance and the feel of the blow and draw change. Uh, and then I would do that for a long time. And then I would try to combine to just play as legato as I can. So it doesn't sound. So you get like one flow of breath, like. So it doesn't sound. But I really. <laughs> hard to describe. And then you can always kind of play the first note a bit longer and the second one a bit shorter, like. Or. Now I'm doing different markings as well, that is to mask when it changes blow and draw pattern. But that's a great question, I'm working on that one all the time. <laughs> it's one of the hardest things to do. But like... I don't know what I'm doing. But you know, playing fast stuff and trying to connect it and play smooth. It takes a while, but do that play long, short, long, short, and short, long, short, long, short, long. That has helped me a lot in uh, using breath changing techniques. Perry, if I purchase your pattern, what am I going to be shown? Tutorials or lessons? Yes, exactly that. Tutorials and lessons, and you get sheet music, PDF, and some backing tracks. Uh, and uh, and also actually if you want to join my patreon you can you can join now anytime but it would be great if you join <laughs> on june 2nd because i will have some nice new material uploaded so wait a few days think about it and then go for it and for everyone anyone interested if you want to check it out i will just write it's like this oops oops uh, here you can find more harmonica tutorials but oh, as i said join on check it out on june 2nd in three days to two days from now because i'm having some new cool stuff being uploaded uh, and then skyrider hi philip thank you for your expertise what key do you find to be the most difficult for you to play in good one <laughs> Uh, depends on what I'm playing, depends on the tempo and the feel of the song, etc. But I think... I don't know. Uh, I like C, I like D flat, D... Uh, I think uh, my brain is pretty slow when playing swing jazz in E. <laughs> then I'm slow. But I love playing in E if I play slow and romantic stuff, like... I'm just improvising in E major. Uh, kind of tricky, but kind of nice if the tempo is slow. But yeah, for high tempos, E is my hardest key on the chromatic. Uh, that's my what I'm saying. I also noticed that my F sharp is stuck <coughs> on my 10 hole F sharp. Things happen. <coughs> that's life. I have like my desk here and it's full of harmonicas. I will show you a picture one day. And I just took one now. Uh, thank you, said 92 for jazz. Yes, that's a great one. Another lovely tempo. Uh, 80 is perfect. 
uh, 80 is like um, 160 BPM. I love that. Uh, it's like this. This is 80. That's 80 BPM. No, that's slower. <laughs> that's 70, it's 140. I mean, everything from 60 to 80, if you count two and four, is great for jazz because it's that kind of swing, medium swing, it's not slow swing, it's not too fast, so the brain spins. It's like from 60 to 80 up to 92. And then if it's over 100, you more count like, then you have like on the ones. And that can be a bit tricky. So checker 60 to 80 is great. Yeah, Shane is here. Hi, man. Not a question, but I loved your slow blues that you posted on Facebook. The low F sounded so smooth. Yeah, thanks. I love that low F harp. It's like 12 years old. <laughs> it's actually this one. I played it on the beginning of this live stream. You can go back and hear it. It's really dirty and uh, really dusty. <laughs> and it's been around the world. And uh, yeah, it's a Suzuki uh, that I, I have kind of taped the, the co I have closed the side vents here. And uh, yeah, but I love playing low F harps. They are whew, very, they, they, they fit me somehow. How to unstuck the high F sharp. Yeah, either I just on my chromatic, either I play very hard <laughs> until I get a headache. Um, or you can kind of drill like this fast, going back and forth, you know, like this. But this time I think I have to open up, take off the covers and just it's something that's in there. Um, how much of your improv is created by adapting stuff from other people and how much is completely original? Uh, also, do you know any difference on this? Yeah, good question. I don't know. Am I original? <laughs> Sometimes, I hope. No, but I have I have learned a few solos from other people. And I have also written solos, actually. And uh, I also improvise all the time. Uh, but I, I never transcribed a lot when I started playing jazz. I just played by feeling and by ear. Uh, and uh, then I kind of learned music theory when I was in my 20s. When I was starting playing jazz when I was 15, I just played by ear. Uh, and then I always listened to a lot of things. Uh, but I have never been a guy that knows how to play. I cannot play like a Charlie Parker solo. I cannot play uh, like a Jimi Hendrix solo. But I can play, I can make up a solo. <laughs> But actually, recently, just a few years ago, I started transcribing some to Steelman's solos because they were so good. Um, but um, yeah, I, I don't have, I, I don't know, I'm sure I have licks, like things that I always play, but I'm not aware of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, have no, I don't have like my standard book of things that I, that I have written down and practiced. I have kind of, uh, I try to be an improviser. And now I will see if I can fix this F sharp. Mm. Oh yeah, I can see it's dust in that read. This is a harmonica workshop now, isn't it? F sharp, here we go. Back alive. So, no violence, just a screwdriver. And uh, checking the read and popping it up. I mean, things get stuck in harmonicas because it's open in the back. So. Things will end up in there. Uh, but Herbie Ore, I mean, I have I have stolen lots of things that I like from people, but more like concepts. Like I know that Toots plays lots of altered scales, and I love altered scales, so I have practiced those a lot. 
And I know that Django Reinhardt, I love his playing, the guitar player. And he play, plays lots of harmonic minor. And I, I love practicing harmonic minor licks. And uh, I mean, I love uh, Big Walter. So I have stolen lots of kind of... I don't know, I cannot play like licks and lines from them. But I have tried to... I know what scale kind of things they use and what kind of tonal language they use and what rhythms they dig. Those things I have tried to 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 learn and adapt. I mean, more like kind of the concept of their sound, not but not specific lines. It's it's hard to remember them. Uh, is there any songs you think one should must learn? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, if you want to get into jazz, start with Autumn Leaves, All of Me, It Could Happen to You, Misty. Mm. Blue Bossa. There you have a few good ones. I mean, I can make a list of 40, 50 songs you should learn. But that's some beginner great songs. Sheet Georgia Brown, great song. Uh, right now I am practicing um, Polka Dots and Moonbeams. Lovely ballad, so good. How do you maintain a chromatic harmonica? Mm, I, not so much <laughs> right now. Now it got stuck. Uh, but otherwise, I I don't do so much. I clean the slider a few times uh, in a month, uh, and I tune it if I have to. Uh, and when it's very dirty, I open it up and uh, wipe off the cover plates. Uh, that's all I do. So I very seldom take off the reeds, actually, the reed plates. I mean, and I never wash the reeds themselves. Uh, and I, if it works, it works. But if it doesn't doesn't work. You have to open it up and fix it and be careful. Any tips for keeping the form when improvising without uh, without the backing track? Yes, uh, uh, I mean take a metronome so you have something to relate to, take a low tempo and then you write out uh, the chords on a piece of paper. Use your hand just write them out like you know like a f bar form like this uh, and then you look at that form and improvise and then slowly more and more you just take away the form you just remove the paper uh, and it will stay there in your head and then also if you kind of write out the form of the song and the chords improvise but improvise just playing the chord tones like this kind of playing d7 g7 c f a bit of sweet short brownish but i'm just playing the chord tones all the time i'm not kind of trying to play the hippest solo i'm just trying to nail the sound of every chord that's the first step to rem remembering that you have it in your head uh, could you imagine doing a workshop someday yes i would love to do a workshop i mean do you mean in real life because I would love to do that. Hopefully society is opening up and we can all meet and play music together. But so far we just meet online like this. Have you tried Dabel harps? No, I have not. I have seen pictures on them on internet. But I have never tried them and I don't think I've heard them either. <laughs> I've just seen pictures. But they are a Korea, South Korean company, I think. And that's, uh, yeah, that's super cool. I mean, it's so nice that new harmonica players, no, new harmonica manufacturers come into the scene. I think that's brilliant for every every harmonica player. Because then all harmonica manufacturers get competition and then kind of the level of all harmonicas rise. So it's cool that new harmonicas are coming. Uh, hula ka, what does learning a song mean to you? Uh, learning chords by heart, memorizing melody. Yes, <laughs> you answer your own questions there. The melody and also uh, the melody and then the chords. And if you really want to learn it, you should be able to play it in all keys. 
but that is a lifetime project and I cannot play all of jazz, the jazz tunes I know in all keys. I can play them in some tunes I can play in any key, any time of the day, but not all of them. But that's kind of the last step, kind of to just that the key is no problem that you just play and it's just there. Uh, but uh, yeah, and also it's good to, if you can like just sing the melody, you don't have to sing in perfect, I mean, kind of pitch control, but just be able to do that. And also that you can write out the chords on a paper without harmonica, without the guitar. That's a great way of checking if you know the tune, <laughs> just like just using your brain. Yeah, DJ Rick Mendes. Hello from New York City. I love New York City. I'm in Stockholm, Sweden. Stumbled upon it by accident, but hi, I'm here. Cool, so you're a DJ. Wow, I love DJs. My little brother is a DJ, a music producer. He does EDM and techno stuff. And uh, I am a jazz musician. I improvise music and I play harmonica. So my audience is older <laughs> than my little brother's audience. No, uh, but yeah, cool. Yeah, this is how YouTube works. The algorithm sends people all over internet. Uh, cool. This has been lovely to meet all of you tonight. Maybe I should do more live streams on YouTube. Please write if you think I should. And a question, should I do them on YouTube or on Facebook? What is your opinion? Because I feel YouTube is so much calmer than Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is so intense sometimes. Uh, and I live streaming on Instagram is not good. I have tried, but I don't, I don't understand it so much. And it's so tiny with a phone, and the battery dies. This is more stable. Ah, Christelle Parton plays the bell. Cool. Then I will go to her uh, YouTube channel and have a listen. She's an amazing harmonica player, and uh, she knows so many melodies. She is, she's one of those. And I'm, I mean, it's great that she is in the harmonica community. YouTube, YouTube, could it be... Jeppe, of course it can be announced. <laughs> I'm sorry. This was very spontaneous. I did a live stream yesterday just playing two songs. But then, I, oh, this I have forgotten about this. So I thought, maybe I do it again. And the beauty of it is that it's more fun to just sit and talk with people. Uh, and play, of course. And But I, I mean, if I just sit and play, I can do that as well. But this is such an interesting time to be able to learn and, and make connections with people. So yes, uh, I will announce next time. I will announce on my Facebook, Instagram, and because I don't know if you can announce on YouTube. I, I have to try. I have to try that. John Lerner, my songs from yesterday was amazing. Yeah, thank you. That was great. I had a great time playing those. Yeah, cool. For the first 15 minutes, it was one people here. Now we have been 25. That's lovely. People who loves harmonica and music. Aha, stream premiere. I will try that. I'm all, it's always stuff to learn. I mean, a few a year. Yeah, you have to be just as good at live streaming as on playing music <laughs> these days. Cool. Yeah, I will end this now. Mm. Ah, one more question. Okay, this is the last question. What is your favorite non-custom diatonic? Good question. And to be honest, I have not played a non-custom diatonic in so many years. So I cannot answer your question in a good way. Uh, there are other people's people to ask for that. Because I always play a custom instrument. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm soon done. <laughs> uh, cool. So, but yeah, right on Facebook, I mean, in the modern blues harmonica, there are people, they have, they have tried all harmonica. I have only played my mungies for 10 years and they are custom. Yeah, exactly. You know, you should click the bell. You should subscribe. You should hit the like button. Oh, there are many things you should do. And I'm not a good YouTuber, as you can <laughs> I'm not so good at YouTube. Cool. Anyway, I say goodbye and thank you for tonight. Take care and I hope to see you in the next live stream. Bye-bye.